just good evening um, it is March 23rd 2010 and we're calling the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order um, the first order of business is approval of the minutes from our January 26th board meeting <coughs> move approval second all in favor aye. 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 all in favor the minutes are approved um, old business. I'm not aware of any old business. If uh, any of the other board members are aware of some, let me know. None. There being no old business to discuss, we'll move on to the new business. To hear the request of Michael and Jennifer Duddy of 11 Crescent View Avenue, tax map U16, lot 41, for a right sideline variance of 13 feet from the required 25 feet to replace a single car garage with a mudroom and a two car garage with family room above at 12 feet from said property line. Uh -huh. Mr. Duddy? Should come on up and, and uh, explain to us what you want to do here. Uh, well, greetings and good evening. Thanks for coming out on this rainy day uh, to consider my variance application. So. Um, as the application says, and as you summarize, we're uh, hoping to build an addition on the side of our house. We currently have a one-car garage and mudroom, and many of you may have seen it as you drove by in the past week or two. Um, we would like to expand the size of that garage to be a two-bay garage and then get a family room up above it. Um, the Crescent uh, View Avenue neighborhood is a neighborhood of relatively small lots and houses all close together, houses of modest to medium size. Um, many of the houses in the neighborhood already sit um, closer to their side property lines um, than our house does and sit closer to their property lines than our house would even with the addition. And half of the neighborhood sits um, as close or closer to their side lines um, as our house would with, with the addition. So we feel like we meet the requirement um, of the variance standard to show 50% um, of the neighborhood is already um, as close or closer to the sideline. Uh, I want to talk a minute about the size of the house, the square footage. Um, uh, and you've got the, the figures in front of you there. Um, if you drive through the neighborhood, you'll see that there are a number of houses that are already larger than the house than our house would be, even with the addition on it. In particular, toward the uh, the end of the circle overlooking Crescent Beach, the houses are all larger. Uh, since we've been there, or just as we were buying our house about 11 years ago, there are a couple of additions, um, houses um, added onto that make them substantially larger than our house would be, even with the addition. But what we're asking you to do is think about the size in the, in the following way. In our neighborhood, as the older generation moves along and a new generation of families move in, which is happening incrementally all the time, what we're seeing is, by and large, the houses having the roofs cut off and second stories put on and people going out to the side with a garage or some form of addition. If you were to take the houses that are there now and look at size in the following way, cut the, cut the roof off, and if the house went up over the footprint and over the garage, would our house still be comparable to all of those houses? And I think the answer is that's an easy yes. I mean, that's the natural evolution for this neighborhood. We don't think it's going to change the nature of the neighborhood. We think it allows the neighborhood to evolve with the families that are there without anybody having a McMansion in the middle of a small, modest neighborhood. Um, so from a size perspective, we also think that um, we meet the uh, variance um, standard. So with that, I'm here to answer your questions. Um, it's relatively straightforward, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a question for you or maybe it's, it's for Bruce, but have there been uh, I drove around there actually just before this meeting just to get a, a feel for the, for the neighborhood a little, little more. Are there other, it looks like there are, there are some homes there that have had some renovations done. Have there been other homes in that neighborhood that have come before the ZBA for, for a similar variance? Uh, the, if you go around a corner, two houses from Mr. Duddy's uh, Miller's have had a variance. Um, 
Catherine and Craig uh, Miller. Um, I'm not sure if that's the only variance. What, what sort of variance was that for, Bruce? Was it for a sideline? That line? was a uh, front yard, I believe, for a porch. <clears throat> they were on a court a lot. I think they characterized it as a front. Yeah. Depending on how you look at the, the house, it's the front of the side. Yeah, by definition, if it, on a corner lot, we have two front setbacks. Um, and I think that was for the barn porch that was put on the front. Uh, there was a variance given for that. Um, I'm not aware of any other variances in that neighborhood. That, that's not to say there hasn't been, but mm -hmm. I just, I, I'm not aware um, of any others. I can tell you, I'm just chatting with the neighbors informally, and I don't have dates specifically in mind. Some of the neighbors um, have talked about getting variances in the past. When that was, I, I, I don't know. I didn't go to the property files and, and try to track any of that down. That, that could very well be. I just, I, from my history, it, um, I can't tell you if, uh, other than lot 63 on here, the only one I know of. I see we have, we have uh, I believe, three letters from uh, members of the neighborhood in support of your uh, application. Uh, have, you, have you talked to more than just these three Oh, absolutely. And can you give us a feel for how the rest sure. of them might feel about it? Yeah. Um, about seven years ago when I was here asking for variants to put on a porch, um, I showed up with a petition signed by every single um, household neighborhood, uh, every household in the neighborhood. Everyone was enthusiastically supportive and wanted us to be able to build a porch of a certain width on the front of our house. And the board voted no, we couldn't do that. Um, despite all of the support in the neighborhood. This time around, I debated whether or not to go around and get the same sort of petition. It did no good last time, so I didn't do it. Um, but that isn't to say that I didn't walk around and chat with all of the neighbors, and I knew that Bruce was going to send out a notice inviting neighbors if they wanted to confidentially, without peer pressure from one of their neighbors, to send in comments to the board, which is really why I didn't go around and do it. But I did indeed go around and talk to the neighbors, in particular, um, I talked with Tom O'Connell, who owns the house that is right alongside that right sideline property line. I've known Tom now for 11 years. Um, and he was not only supportive, but enthusiastic. He's been supportive and enthusiastic for any of the building we wanted to do at our house. And he was absolutely comfortable and, and supportive. And several of the other neighbors have walked by and said, geez, we hope to get it. Um, I, I have not heard candidly and completely truthfully, one discordant note out of anybody in the neighborhood. Thank you. This was lot 40 that you're talking about, the, your neighbor on the, to the right yes. of you? Lot 40. And, and just, just for the record, um, a Mary Burns of 15 Crescent View Avenue has sent in um, a note supporting the application. Um, a Lois Ewing of 8 Crescent View Avenue has sent in an email supporting the application as has uh, Peter Hatem and his wife of 18 Crescent View Avenue. We didn't solicit any of those. Those are just by the neighbors who wanted to write in. So the best of your knowledge, those are responses to the notice that was sent out by Bruce? Yes. Now, you know, there are a number of conclusions, Mr. Duddy, that we need to we need to vote on here before we can decide whether we can grant the variance or not. Um, and one of them is um, one of the requirements that we need to, or one of the factors that we need to consider is the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. And um, I have to confess, I'm a little concerned about that one because, you know, I, I too was just driving through the neighborhood. I'm surprised I didn't actually collide with. Mr. Thibodeau, um, but it looks like you know the, the, the circumstances are not unique to your property. They're they're prevalent throughout the neighborhood. Um, is there anything in particular about your property that makes it a requirement for this variance more you know more necessary than it would be for other ones in the neighborhood, or is it more just a symptom of that's the way that this neighborhood has evolved over the years? And I mean, the house is it's unique to my, to my property in the sense that the house is located where it was. I didn't locate it there. It's located on that lot to that side in a certain distance. 
um, what other houses in the neighborhood aren't located that way. Some are offset one way or the other so that they've been able to get a two-car garage in. So I don't know that it's general to the neighborhood. It's certainly specific to my law. <coughs> Uh, um, do, have you had any plans developed as far as what the, you know, what you're considering as far as the second story? I, I've talked to four builders at this point. Um, we uh, have not had plans done because, frankly, I don't want to put the money into drawing the plans up until I know whether or not we can do the project. Yeah. But you're set on what the footprint would be, correct? Yeah, and that, I, I've gotten input now from a series of builders on what the footprint should look like. I, I would like to have more room, frankly. Yeah. Um, I'd like to be able to take it right out to 10 feet, which is sort of the minimum that you can go, but the numbers in talking with Bruce, they just don't add up to do that. So um, faced with that reality, you know, it's again, it's a, it's a, it's a neighborhood of some modest size houses and modest size garages. We're not going to get the garage that we're gonna, we would get in Cross Hill, but we need some space to get a two-bay two bay uh, garage. And, you know, if this variance is approved and you go forward with the builder, in any event, it won't be any closer than 12 feet to that side, correct? Line, correct? And I see that the front, the front uh, property line is going to shrink by two feet as well. Yes. Is that just from the geometry of the, the way it will be laid out? Yes. And there's plenty of room to the front. There's actually room to the back, but the septic, uh, the leach field is in the back, so you can't really go back much right. further in the back. I mean, you know, we've got a leach field in the back, we've got a septic tank in the back, and then the other side of the house is already located close to that property line, so it's the only place we can put it. It's the only place we can go, we can expand it all on the lot. Yeah, I, I think the only thing that, one of the things that just, um, I question is, one of the conditions here is is that the, the structure won't, won't cast any shadows on an adjacent lot, and kind of not knowing what the, you know, what the family room up above the garage, how I don't know what the height would be on that. Obviously, it can't be more than 35. But, um, how much that would cast a shadow, you know, you'd really probably more on the, on the lot 40 side. Um, but yeah, the nice thing with the house on lot 40 is that it's, first off, it's raised. You, there's a stone wall that mm -hmm. goes around there, and it's about three feet higher. Mm -hmm. than our house, and it already had a second story addition put on. It's also closer to the, pro to the front. My house is set back on the lot. Tom O'Connell's set forward on the lot. My garage is, from my house, set back further. So the garage is actually set relatively far back in relationship to where that adjacent house is, mm -hmm. which is why I don't think it's going to cause any shadow over there, and Tom certainly isn't concerned about it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I think you might have just answered that question, but you've spoken to that. To that oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I have a question. Hi, Mike. Hi. Uh, in determination of the square footage, you knew your own square footage. You determined the square footage of the adjacent properties by how? By the town records? Is that what you did? Yeah, Bruce basically said go into the property cards and so I sat down in the office upstairs and pulled all the property cards and went through the calculation and it's different than a realtor would post it because per Bruce, when you, add, you can include for instance garage space um, as part of the square footage even though it's not living space. That's, that was going to be my next question. Did you, uh, you included gross living space as well as garage? To the extent I could figure it out from the property cards, yes. So the, the, the footprint plus any additional second story living space, is that how you determined it? That's correct. And that's how you, so that applies yours too. Uh, the uh, couple points of note here. Uh, you, you're on a private septic, is that correct? Correct. And your septic's in the, the back, I guess. That's right. Um, the coverage of that is, is certainly within, uh, your requested coverage is certainly within the 20% on a private septic system. You can't cover more than 20% of the, of the lot. Uh, as far as your side setbacks, uh, you certainly inventory that very well, and of the 25, more than half 
uh, the properties certainly have similar side setback nonconformity is what you're requesting. So that's not an issue. Your coverage lot is not an issue. The, the one <coughs> point that is an issue is the, the requested square footage, and, and I'm sure you're aware of that. Uh, the, the, uh, the ordinance re uh, request and, uh, and the significant economic, uh, economic injury definition uh, placing is defined as placing an applicant for variance or disadvantage of neighboring properties and it goes on to mention structures of comparable size location and number of those lot owners in the immediate neighborhood uh, y y your inventory is certainly uh, and it requests no fewer than 10 and you certainly have more than that the one issue is that your requested increase as you noted in your application put you number two in size of the neighborhood. And the ordinance specifically points out that, they, that that's not acceptable. Uh, it, you're were aware of that. Do, are there any other alternatives that, that you might propose? I know this is your desire, and I support your desire. The ordinance says otherwise. Uh, and, and, Again, it only seems to be on the point of the square footage, not the setbacks, you're, and not the, the coverage, lot coverage. Both of those are certainly within acceptable uh, range right. for your application. That's what I was explaining, at least my proposal and my approach um, at the outset with regard to square footage. In my view, I think you need to, I'm asking you to look at, and I think it's fair to look at this neighborhood in terms of the size in the following way. The neighborhood is going to evolve over time. It has already been evolving. I mean, my house is a second story, Tom's, Greg's, and several others. The houses are basically going up and to the extent they can over a garage. So when I ask you to, to compare size, what I'm asking you to do is compare size with evolution in mind so that if you were to cut the top off these houses, there are uh, still many of them one story houses. Is the size comparable once you put a second story over the house and the garage? Because that's where the neighborhood should go, needs to go to give people some room to stay there. I mean, those of us that are there in like the neighborhood are trying hard, frankly, to not go to a large development where you're going to knock down trees and this, that, and the other thing to build big houses. I think it, it's fair to say the size of this house is comparable in a neighborhood where if not currently today, those houses don't have second stories on them. When they do, is it going to be comparable? And I think it absolutely is. It fits with what's going on around us and will continue to go on around in the neighborhood. So you're right, the square footage right now, if you take a strict interpretation of how to measure that relative to the other houses, um, it's larger than many of them. Many of them are over 2,000 feet. And the, the additional um, position I would, uh, that we are taking and asking you to adopt is comparable says comparable. In the ordinance itself, it doesn't say, actually, it must be, each house must be as large or larger. It says comparable. Now, the rule of thumb that Bruce and you folks use to help measure in your own minds what comparable is, at least with the sidelines, has been, is it as close or closer? I think that's easier. Is it or is it not within 25 feet and how close you get? Size is something that I think is inherently more in the eye of the beholder. There are gables that I haven't measured on many of those houses, dustpan, other types of gables. There are other bumps out here and there. I think size is a more fungible um, um, characteristic. I think it needs a little bit more flexibility in the interpretation. And so again, what we're asking you to do is envision the neighborhood down the line. Is this size comparable with houses as they would be if they were not over their footprint in their garage? And I think it is. Uh, I tend to agree with everything you said. And, and I understand your approach. Uh, the ordinance 
it says it a little more di directly than that, though, and, and that's what we're faced with. I'd like for Bruce to comment on the ordinance and your, our town's interpretation of the ordinance in regards to application of the significant uh, economic injury definition, which is what we are applying or what we're required to apply to this type of variance. Well, uh, I'll speak in general terms. Uh, uh, significant economic injury, um, an applicant has to show that, that, that they would suffer significant economic injury by de being deprived of um, something that already exists in the neighborhood, and which means that, that the board, after that it was adopted, uh, decided that Originally, it was six out of ten, uh, or, or majority, and they, 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 through their deliberations and through the years, it evolved to at least half. Um, the key, the key to remember is it, that it's not in the ordinance, but it's a guideline that's been used ever since the practical difficulty standards have come out. That that you compare it size to size, and and the board is determined on whether a variance is granted or not based on on exactly that. That that if you don't if you don't have the comparables in size then you, you really can't show or prove that you're, you, you that you have a significant you would have a significant economic injury uh, without the variance. And I don't know if I'm making that clear but And have we have 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 we not requested an interpretation from the town attorney regarding comparable, the, how we apply comparable? The town attorney has, has at various workshops, and we probably should have had one of these with the new members, but at various workshops have, have, have uh, basically said that the, the, the development of the ordinance, the change of ordinance for practical difficulty and significant economic loss was done by uh, 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 the audience committee. And as a result, the board had to make some kind of standards to go by so that they could, they could review an application. The, the attorneys have, have, have said that that's a fine thing to do. And once you establish that, that, that to be fair, unless something else changes, uh, you should continue on that same path. You know, because we've had boards that that will say, "Well, we can change this." I mean, we're we're not that same board, so we could change the standards. Well, I guess you can, but you, in general, you got to look at what's been established, and you got to you got to base that on on following what the ordinance, uh, what you're charged to do from the ordinance. So, um, and what has that established basis been? The established basis is, is is at least half of the things that, that of the properties that have been inventoried. It's a two prong that the setbacks have to be equal to or less than, and that the the the, the total um, square footage uh, has to be equal to or greater than what the what what the applicant would ultimately want. So as it's you, you 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 are familiar with that, and I and I think there's a couple of board members that are familiar with it. But um, that's a standard that's been set, and and when an applicant comes in the office, I can tell them uh, exactly what they can expect out of the board um, based on that. So um, we don't have a lot of applications. That wouldn't go anywhere because of that. Uh, you know, it, when we used to, when we were in the old hardship criteria, it was, it was really so tough to me. And I'm not saying this is not tough because it is tough to me. But it, this board and boards across the state uh, would look exactly a, a, at the neighbors, and if and if and if neighbors were happy with it, then the variance was granted. If the neighbors weren't then the variance didn't get granted. That was a very unfair situation. And I could never explain to anybody, I always said, you got a 50-50 chance, go for it. With the advent of the new practical difficulty standards, 
that was a time where, where, where the boards could now look at those standards and be able to work through a process that would be fair uh, for each person based on, based on what they submit and whether they can approve that significant economic loss. So in general terms, uh, that's what the board has established and the, and the attorney has had, the town attorney has had no problems with, with what, what that established uh, criteria was or had, it has been. Um, I, I think if, if the board wanted to change that for some way or look at an application different, I guess they could, but the records really should would reflect why there's a change, what, 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 in, what prompted the board to make, to, to decide on a, on a different set of criteria, or have good, solid grounds to, to apply, approve an application based on something other than what they have been doing right along. It, or, or what I'm saying is, I guess, um, maybe not change what they've done right along, but if you can find it, that this is unique based on Mr. Duddy's uh, uh, application and his, in, his, in, in the way he views it, or is hoping that you'd view it, and you can establish that in the record, that's a not a bad thing. But you you got You you can't just randomly say that you know. Yeah, we think this is good, and just and just pass it. You got to have, you got to have something in the record to show that this application is different, and that you can deviate from something that you've already had set in stone. Otherwise, otherwise you should stick to the audience. So I think it's. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think the end determination and historically is that by defining as is noted in the application that as a note 50 percent of the inventory properties comparable prop properties must qualify and I think that the what you're saying and correct me if I'm wrong is that we are taking this out of the subjective decision making it and making it purely objective in the sense that if of the 10 inventory properties, five are similar, your request is in the middle of the 10, then that's the historically what we've been basing the decision on. Is that correct? Yes. So it, uh, you'd have to, and you've got to show for the record why this is different and why you don't, right. you don't go by the historical so, uh, findings. The determination is, is, is objective at this point. And that's why my opening question to you was, have you looked at other square footage issues? I support your intent. The ordinance says otherwise. And that's what we're faced against from an objective standpoint. I, 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 I think it's your application is complete, your goals are and intents are valid, uh, your inventory is proper, the setbacks, you fall well within that range, the, the coverage of the lot for non-conforming septic served lot uh, is appropriate, the square footage is your number two out of ten, and that's, that's, that's or number two out of twenty-five, I should say, but if, if you selected the nearest 10, I don't know what that would be. That's the ob objective issue that we are faced with, and we, your points are very valid. If I were in your place, I would feel the same way. And, and I'm, my feelings is a very conservative uh, approach in, in government. I wouldn't want the government telling me what I could do and how I could build or expand. The ordinance says that that is what we're faced with. And the square footage of putting in the sense that you will be the second largest, you will enlarge to become the second largest instead of the fifth largest. And that's the one issue that the ordinance challenges your request. The, I take exception, Jay, to your argument that that's what the ordinance says and the ordinance says otherwise. The ordinance doesn't say otherwise. That's my point. We've got the ordinance right in front of us. We can all read it. 
it says significant economic injury having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size location and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood but no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners okay it doesn't talk about in the ordinance the size having to be the same or less than those it says comparable that's what the ordinance says Bruce talked about the ordinance being changed from the prior standard that was so restrictive that you couldn't do anything to this practical difficulty and significant economic injury set of standards. I think it's fair to say, any, any observer objectively would say, that the town made that change to allow some flexibility to be breathed into this variance process. What I'm saying is if you look at the ordinance, it says comparable in size. What I'm saying, and asking you folks to take as your approach, that when you compare what we want to do, it is comparable in size to 50% or 100% of the neighborhood in the sense of what the neighborhood is going to evolve to. It doesn't say in the ordinance, comparable in size and location to the houses as they are always going to exist. It doesn't say that. It says comparable in size to those of other lot owners. Those other lot owners are going to want to go up as well. And when they do, I think what's appropriate is to make sure that nobody puts, for want of a better term, a McMansion on that lot, but basically takes the house and the footprint and the garage and goes up. And if you look at it that way, I'm not asking this ZBA to change the ordinance, just asking for you to read the ordinance with some level of flexibility nor am I asking you to change the, stand, the rule of thumb standards that you use that are not in the ordinance, but you use them to try to um, objectively maintain some semblance of uniformity between different applicants, but to, to, in this case, apply them in the sense of where is this neighborhood going? This neighborhood is going in this direction. This is comparable to what those houses are going to look like as the neighborhood develops. I think it's different. It is unique to this neighborhood that it, it is a neighborhood in transition, as is the neighborhood behind us. Um, it's unlike other neighborhoods where, you know, take Cranbrook, Cranbrook, Stonegate, Cross Hill, Layton Farms. I mean, these are already neighborhoods that the lots allow the houses to be substantially large by the time they're built. If somebody's going to come in and ask for a variance there, well, gee whiz, those neighborhoods are complete and done. But in these transitional neighborhoods, I think it's important to allow families who want to stay there to have the flexibility to go up, stay on their lot in a way that isn't clearly out of place in the neighborhood. So I'm not asking for a change. I'm asking for some flexibility and interpretation. I'm not asking you to depart from the ordinance. And the only thing I would say, Jay and Chandler, to your comment is what you're saying in terms of the ordinance says otherwise, the ordinance, ordinance doesn't. The rule of thumb that you use to interpret the ordinance says something, and I'm not even asking you to depart from that, but just to apply it in a flexible way with an eye to the future of the neighborhood. Your comments, I, I cannot disagree with anything you said. And, and, <clears throat> And your arguments are very compelling. Now, a, a question that I might have back to you is, well, first let me comment. Historically, the board has to give some type of guidance and definition to comparable. We have felt in the past that being in the middle of the group is comparable. And that's why it states in here 50% or interprets it as 50%. Now, <coughs> there are situations where would, wh what is the definition of comparable? I mean, if, some, if you wanted to expand a, the largest being 38, you want to expand to 39 or 3,000. Is that comparable? And, or everything over two in this situation, is that comparable? How do we define comparable? I think in this neighborhood it's easy. You look at those square footages, especially with the single-story houses in the garages, essentially multiply by two. None of those are going to put you over 3,000. 
I think that's a comfortable, clear um, line of division in that neighborhood. And I think you can see it just objectively. I'm not even talking subjectively. If you use my approach, that's what it gets you. It clearly gets you to about 3,000 feet is the breaking point. The, I shouldn't have said how can we define. We have, we have tried to put an objective definition on this his, in, in the past. And that's, that's uh, otherwise everybody could come in and make an argument for comparable enlargement or expansion. And so that's what we're faced with. Bruce, would you comment further on, on, on his comments, Mr. Duddy's comments, please? I, that's, I'd like you to respond to him. Well, the neighborhood itself is in a residential A district, which means the residential A for creation of a lot today is 80,000 square feet. It was 80,000 square feet for creation of a new lot with 30-foot setbacks. The town has attempted to redress some of these older neighborhoods that have small lots by reducing the setback from 30 to 25 on sides, 25 from 30 on the front and 30 to 20 on the, on the rear. Um, and that's, that's still restrictive. Hence, people do want to be able to build and request variances. Um, the problem with, is with, with, with this whole neighborhood is that you've got 12 properties here that are all going to be faced with that same thing. If they decide to, decide to, to go up or out, they feasibly could be, be faced with the same problem that Mr. Duddy is faced with today. So the real, the real issue is, I believe, that the council should be looking to change the ordinance to allow setbacks that are reasonable for neighborhoods like Mr. Duddy's. And Maureen, the town planner, and myself both tried to get something passed several years ago. Uh, and the council uh, ultimately decided that th they were happy with the setbacks. Uh, and based. And, and they base some of that on the fact that if you have structures that are less than those, those measurements and you start building up, that you do take away the privacy and possibly the feel of a neighborhood by having, having a structure that's bigger than what the lots would support. Um, so th we, couldn't, we didn't go anywhere with that. So now we're faced with... with, with with people who are trying to, to uh, better their property, and the board's faced with looking at the whole situation um, and, ha and having to use, they don't have to use the standards they, they've used in the past, but that's the only, the only thing that they've got going for them. I mean, if you, could, if you could establish that this situation is standalone from what you've already established in the past, and the record clearly states how you got there, then I think you could pass this. But if you pass it and, and you deviate from what you've already used for standards for, for seven years or whatever, however long this has been in, in the, on the books, um, then you create a problem for, the, for, for how do you handle the next one and the next one and the next one. So that, that puts you, the board in an awkward place, I realize that. <coughs> but I, I really do believe it's, it's the standards and, and what the board has created in the past is, is logical. And it would be nice to, 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 to look at some of these smaller neighborhoods in the residential aid district and we're, have a little more, little more leniency at that level. Can, can I respond to Please. those remarks? I mean, I think um, Bruce's description of, of the council deciding to stay with the setbacks as they are is accurate. But what they moved to was a more flexible variance standard. And I think that was a reasonable compromise because I think it was reasonable for the town council to say, let's stick with the, um, the, uh, the setbacks as they are so that on a case-by-case -case basis, the ZBA can 
look at privacy issues and, and things like that so that you don't, by ordinance, wipe out that kind of case-by-case -case decision making. But I would argue that that's exactly then what you're supposed to do. You've got a more flexible set of variance uh, definitions in the ordinance, specifically so that you could address this case-by-case -case analysis. And Bruce is making the argument that you shouldn't deviate from the rule of thumb that you use to help implement the ordinance. And again, I'm not even asking you to deviate from the rule of thumb. I'm asking you in this neighborhood that I think it is fair and any objective observer would say this neighborhood is a neighborhood that is in transition and needs to transition to accommodate the family of, nine, uh, of 2010 versus 1960 when it was built to still be a neighborhood of modest houses for families that don't want to try to compete with the Shore Road homes or the big uh, other neighborhoods in town to allow them to have space to keep a family there without needing to move out of the neighborhood. That's, I think, well within your purview. It doesn't have you depart from anything. It does, and I fully concede and admit, ask you to approach this particular application with a certain amount of flexibility. I'm not even saying subjectivity, because I think what I've offered the ZBA is a flexible approach still based on relatively objective criteria. This neighborhood is, is unique and interesting in that it is very discreet and absolutely defined. You don't even have fuzziness around the edges. You can, and it's small. Each one of you can look at that neighborhood and in your mind's eye say, I get it. This is not going to look out of place in that neighborhood. What I'm asking you to do is then interpret, not deviate from, the ordinance and the rule of thumb that you've used in the past to make that happen in this neighborhood. Now, I understand as well, Bruce, talking about, well, you've got to do what you've done in the past. I've been here before in front of this ZBA and said, look what you've done in the past. All I want is that. And then had the ZBA say, well, no, well, you know, that applied to that house. That was different. We're not, you know, we're not going to use that as the precedent. But now Bruce is saying, but you've got to stick with the precedent. I think you should make a determination based on this neighborhood and what I think any objective, reasonable observer would look at when they drive around that circle. Jay, can I, can I comment, or are you still can I, can I the just through the chair? Yes, wait, wait, wait. Can I just say one thing before sure. we get off that? Let's let Bruce chime in on that. I, 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 I don't think I said that you've got to that you can't deviate from the precedent. I said, what I said was if, if you do go beyond or in a different direction from what's already established, that the record should, should show clearly why the board has, is doing something different than they've done, they've already established in the past, which is reasonable because one thing, it makes it a nightmare for me to even talk, sit down and talk to people if I don't have anything sure. to, to tell them tell the applicant based on what the board looks at for an application. So it's important that if you do go in a different direction that the, that the records are clear of why you did that. The findings are clear. Thank you, Bruce. Um, I find myself in a quandary here because, I mean, I too have driven through the neighborhood and live on Two Lights Road, so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the neighborhood. Uh, and I have to agree that if you, you know, that in a general sense, if you drive through the neighborhood and you look at the applicant's house and you look at the other houses and you see what he wants to do, that to me, it, it meets the qualification for comparability. <laughs> but on the other hand, you know, going back, I guess, two years ago when I first came on this board, we had a meeting with town council and we talked about the precedent of the you know the five or more out of ten uh, being uh, a criteria or an objectionable an objectable criteria and so I'm not I, I, I find myself having difficulty voting for this uh, because of that but then I also hear what you're saying, Bruce, which is that I might be able to vote for this if we could find a reasonable, uh, objective uh, criteria for treating this different 
uh, from other proposals that might come before us. And I am particularly taken by your arguments uh, in regard to that issue. Uh, and I think you make a lot of sense. Um, I guess what I am going to suggest is that we, in fact, and this, I hate to do this, but that we, in fact, table this uh, to give the applicant the opportunity to put those arguments in writing to us, outlining his case for us treating this as a special circumstance, thereby allowing me, and maybe the other board members, uh, to see my way clear to what Bruce was saying, where we can put something into the record that says this is different. Uh, and so that's my suggestion. I'd like to hear from the other board members to see if that makes any sense to them. Why don't you make a motion and get it second? Well, I would make a right. And make it then have a discussion on whether before you vote. All right. Let me make that a motion to table. Uh, to give the applicant the opportunity to provide us with his explanation of why this should be approved. Before, before we have a second on that, Bruce, would it be appropriate for us to confer with town council some more if we do decide to table this in the interim about what our options are here? You certainly may. Okay, because you know, I, I get the sense, and I don't want to speak for the rest of the board, that, that, but. I get the sense that people are very sympathetic on this board to this application and, and want to try to find a way to grant this application, but at the same time, we need to make sure we're following our procedures and we're staying within the four corners of what we've done before. If I so, may say that if you're looking from, to counsel for, to, to, to establish some kind of criteria to change from what you've been doing based on this application, you're not going to get that. That's your decision. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, I, need, you need to, to, to work through whatever is pre presented and, and find, do some findings of fact that support that. Right. And that, then the attorney isn't really going to help you on that. He's going to tell you that that's your responsibility. Right. Un un understood. Which is where we were two years ago when, we, when I first started here. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's a tough situation. Okay. Uh, I apologize, interrupt. Uh, is oh, it, no. Is there a second to the motion to table? Uh, I don't think we're at that point just yet. Okay. Well, I, I think for discussion, I think you you can second it without without even knowing where you're going to go with it. At least then then you have a discussion on that motion. There's no sense to discuss it if you don't if, you, if you're not even supporting that. There's no sense to have a discussion on it. So I think it's important to to to, to have a second and then discuss amongst the members whether 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 you want to table it or not. And then, if you don't, then, then you vote and the motion fails. And I just I, I felt like there should be more discussion and possibly more discussion with the applicant, too, before we get to the Well, that, that's what the tabling. That's he what may the, not wish to table it. No, but that's what the, the motion in the second will do. We'll open it up for discussion okay. based on that motion. Okay, do, do I have a second on the motion to table so we can discuss the merits of proceeding with tabling or proceeding with the decision tonight? There's no second on the motion to table. So I'll, I'll second it, but I'd like to continue the discussion. But, but, but by all means, and you know, I yeah. don't think the intent here is to stop any of the discussion. Um, so feel free to, to proceed. Uh, Bruce, let me ask. Uh, I, I want to go back to something I was line of thought I was uh, had early on, and, and that is just going back to kind of the character of this neighborhood. There, yeah, I'm looking at all these various uh, square footages and setbacks, what have you, from the from uh, Exhibit Two. Um, I, I, I note that there we have photographs here of some of the comparables, which um, I guess, Mr. Duddy, you're saying these are renovations that have occurred at all of these locations, lots 59, 49, 58, yes. 48, 42, etc. Yes. Okay. Um, one, one, new, uh, one other property has come before 
uh, has been, I guess, granted a variance in you know over the last few years. But so, were these renovations done prior to the current uh, ordinances being put into effect? Well, it could be several ways how the renovations or the additions got put in place. They could have met the setback, mm -hmm. or they could have got a variance. Um, I guess that's the only two. Ways. Okay, we and we and we don't know. So, and we don't know. There may have been more variances. You only knew of the one. Yeah. Right. Okay. But but you, you, if there were variances prior to practical difficulty, there's, there's nothing to gain by doing by by going there because it was, you know, which way the wind's blowing. Basically, I mean, I hate to say that, but that's what hardship did to every community, not just this one. You, you know, in looking at those pictures, one of the things just in the neighborhood we find crazy is that if you take a look at Lot 48, the picture of Lot 48, that lot sits directly to the ocean side of Lot 49. And Lot 49 had that addition, two-car garage, entryway, and second-story addition put on first. And then talk about the character of the neighborhood. The folks had that entire section of their house in Lot 48 that goes from the chimney over. Afterwards, completely smack dab in the middle of the ocean view of Lot 49. And yet they were still able to build that whole structure, which is now the largest house in the neighborhood, right smack in the middle of the ocean view. And so I come before you and I say, look, I'm not obstructing anybody's view. We're not deteriorating anybody's privacy. We're clearly staying within the character of the neighborhood, and it, it, it's frustrating as a, a, a landowner to say, you know, we're not grading on anybody here, and everybody's supportive, and how can it be that you've got a, an ordinance and a rule of thumb that can allow for an outcome that seems to be so manifestly unfair as between lot 48 and 49, yet would not allow me to build a garage on lot 41. I, I, it seems to be inexplicable. I, I think you're, you're getting right to the, you're, you're cutting right to the point of this whole thing is I think that part of the reason why this rule of thumb is in place is to prevent stuff like this from happening. And you know, I don't know the history here, and I'm not doubting your, 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 your telling of it, but um, <laughs> it seems to me that this could have been the sort of thing where if there had been that rule of thumb in place at the time that this happened, that maybe they would have not gotten the variance to be able to build this. So. I, I think you've got a, you, your discussion is, is as narrow as what the motion was at this point. Right. It, do you, does the board feel that, there's a, there's, that, that you should table it and ask the applicant to bring back a strong argument in writing uh, to support his, his application? And, and if you do, then, then vote on it to do that. And, and you, you can gather information to, to help you make that decision, but I think it has to be based on, is there something there that would warrant that table? Is, is there, is there, can you think there's going to be a, a case, a strong enough case presented from the applicant in writing to, to be able to look at this in, in a different light or in a, in a, a different manner than what you have in the past? It's so very well I think put. You need I, to think, get by that. I, I think that's exactly what I see other board members may not, but <coughs> the reason for my motion. Gentlemen, any more thoughts on the table? I have some, but I'll, I can wait to, if other people want to. I guess my concern is uh, tabling it. I'm not sure that uh, I believe in having standards. And I believe that the 50 percent is a standard the board has had, and it's probably a standard we should be enforcing. Um, and if we're going to change that, I haven't heard anything yet that tells me that he can come back with a convincing proposal to change that. Um, the theory is, is that because the neighborhood is a neighborhood of smaller homes, that over time he will become 50 percent. How do we know that? I mean, and it's looking at these pictures, I agree with them. I mean, I don't know how a, uh, the house on uh, 
48 got built. That was obviously before this board. And uh, um, but I uh, I would be concerned um, with the idea of just delaying this for the sake of delaying it. And I haven't heard anything that would indicate to me that when he comes back, we're going to have a different decision. And so that's kind of where I'm at with the tabling. I, can, I, can I just respond for a moment? I mean, I guess my, my comments to that would be fair enough. I think standards are important for fairness, but I don't think standards should be used for, for lack of fairness as well. I think standards get you so far, but at some point you can take into and should take into account other variables when I think probably each one of you sitting there can see the end point and the fairness in what's being requested, maybe not, uh, but I think an objective observer can. And the question is, how do you apply those standards? The, the intent of the ordinance, as I'm sure you know, and I'm not picking on any one house, so let's choose House 48. If everybody in the neighborhood wanted to build a house like 48, what would it do to the neighborhood? Probably wouldn't make you happy. If everybody said, look at that one, if they can do it, I can do it too. And I, I'm not sure that'd make you happy. It wouldn't make me happy if everybody did that. Nothing against 48 at all, but your points, uh, comments regarding that earlier, I, I think were probably relevant. I think the size of the house is perfectly comparable and satisfactory for the neighborhood. I really do. I mean, I think that house fits in beautifully. Everyone likes it. The only problem with that is, and, that, and the, the point of seeming inexplicability is how somebody could build it, particularly in front of somebody's view. I don't think that that house is too big for the neighborhood. It wraps around beautifully. I think everyone in the neighborhood would be delighted to see houses float up to that size or, you know, that's a, a little bit larger lot. It's an oddly shaped lot on the corner, so they could wrap it around. It, it appears to be one, one of the lar largest it lots is. in it's the neighborhood. It is. the largest one there. Yeah. <clears throat> Still less than 3,000 feet. <clears throat> but the, the, the whole purpose of the ordinance by the, the town and residential A is to keep the character of the neighborhood. And, and that's, that's the reason for the ordinance. And, and their use of the term comparable is to keep from changing the character of the neighborhood. And that was. Couldn't agree more, but I think you've got to be careful. The character of the neighborhood doesn't depend on houses that were modest in size for 1964. I don't think the intent of that ordinance was ever to keep every house in that neighborhood in 2010 a ramp. I think it's to keep it a neighborhood of houses close together, of modest size based on 2010 standards for what families in today's world are looking for. And with no house in that neighborhood really even able physically to exceed 3,000 feet, I think every house there is, is comparable now or will be. Um, <clears throat> I guess the, the challenge I have goes back to what I was saying before is, is the, the board has set up a standard that they go by, which is 50%, and you need to be in the middle of that group, uh, score footage-wise, or you can't build it. And now you're saying we should change that, and, and we should have flexibility to change it if we think it makes sense, but it, we can't change it for one neighborhood and then have another neighborhood come and say, well, you changed it for that neighborhood. Why can't you change it for my neighborhood? And then we don't have anything to go by uh, to be a valid board that says there are standards that you have to go by, and, and we're going to live by those, and we're going to enforce them to the people who come to us because that makes sense. And you can sit back and say as a board, we did our job because we kept it within the standards that we had applied across the board, and people aren't being disadvantaged uh, by that. And so as much as I think we would like to see you be able to do it, at the present time, it doesn't meet the standard that the board has established. I know you don't agree with it, but, but that's okay. It is still the standard that the board has established. 
I'm not asking you to depart from the 50 percent standard. I'm just but you asking, are. Well, I'm because asking you to apply that. Because your request varies from it. I'm, at, I'm asking you to apply that 50 percent standard to the size of the houses that will ultimately occupy the, the neighborhood. But I so, can't do that because I don't know what the size of those houses right. are going to be in the future. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, isn't that just sort of, aren't we creeping towards the McMansion then or sl slouching towards McMansions that way? Because every I mean, time you get another one, you're going to say, well, uh, you know, we can, not you, I mean, in general, you know, well, th there are 3,000 square foot houses. We can get closer to that. Well, now the 3,100 square foot houses, we can get to that. Um, I, I'm not sure that, 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 uh, that logic works. Um, I don't know. Of course. In, in defense of my motion, I mean, I, I, I guess I, I don't see what we have to lose. Uh, if, the, if the applicant can't convince us with his written statements for the next meeting, then we're not convinced, and he, you know, and we vote it down. On the other hand, if there's any chance that he can convince us, then I think he ought to have the opportunity to do that. Uh, and I'm willing to, you know, come back in another month and, 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 and take a look at it. Uh, I, I guess that's the point of my motion. Also, in regard to the standards, and now I'm going to have to go back to where I was a couple years ago, Malcolm and I, <laughs> uh, you know, the, we're talking about applying an unwritten standard. But what we really ought to be applying is the ordinance not an unwritten standard. The ordinance says comparability. Now, we can, we can, we can apply the standard, and I'm, I'm, I do that. I agree that there should be some consistency, and particularly, particularly for Bruce, <laughs> who, has to, who has to meet with the public and, decide, and try to advise them on how to do this. But to me, the overriding factor is the ordinance, not an unwritten standard. But you still got to, if, if you're going to take a stand on something that you haven't before, if you're going to go somewhere with that, then you clearly, the findings of fact, have to indicate why that, that, that this application is, is different. And, and, and so, that, so that not only to the record can be clear, but there's guidance out there for, for other people that come before the board. So, so you don't get off, you don't, nobody gets off the hook by saying, I like this application. It's not that easy. You, you gotta have, you gotta have something for the record showing that this is why we made a decision and we deviated from what we, we have set as, as, as our reviewing uh, tool. Agreed. To, I, so, I don't disagree with that at all, Bruce. So, that, so yeah. whether you send him away or not, I mean, if indeed... <coughs> if He's going to... The applicant has to come up with... For the, the question I guess the board's asking is... is the, the exception. They've got to be convinced that that, that potential is... I'm right. not sure he can do it. I don't know whether he can do it or not do it. But I'm willing to let him try to do it. Any more comments on the motion to table? No? All in favor of tabling um, the Duddy's application until our next scheduled hearing um, in anticipation of the Duddy's supplying some additional written um, support for the application. Uh, all in favor of that, say aye. 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 Uh, the nays have it, so we will proceed today. Um, do I have a motion to close public comment? Okay. Uh, do you want to be heard? Are you, are you Mrs. Duddy? I apologize. I'm not trying to, not trying to, not trying to cut anyone off. Very briefly, I'm Jennifer Duddy, um, his wife and the owner with Mike of the house at issue. Um, I, I would just ask for you to reconsider the motion to table. Um, it seems to me that we've been able to discuss the merits of this for an hour, and there's clearly some possibility uh, for 
us to come back um, asking again for flexibility, asking for deviation, and asking to establish something that Bruce can take away and use with future neighborhoods and future applicants. I think there's a possibility for that or we wouldn't have been sitting here for an hour. There'll be certainly no harm done to the community or to, to the town for us to have that opportunity to come back. So I would respectfully ask you to reconsider the motion to table with that in mind um, and allow us to come back in a month clear-headed, give anyone who needs at the time to consult with council or consult further and allow us that opportunity to come back. I certainly think that that benefit of the doubt uh, to allow us that opportunity would be warranted in, in this case, especially when we've spent an hour working on it at this point, and, and there seems to be at least the possibility that we would be able to do that. So I would respectfully ask those of you who voted in the negative to reconsider um, and, and give us at least the, that opportunity to come back. Thank you. Um, anyone else who wishes to be heard? Um, do I have a motion to close public comment? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, by unanimous consent, we close public comment. <coughs> um, is there anything, anything else that uh, anyone wants to say at this point, or is there anything further that we can discuss? I know that that Mrs. Dowdy had suggested that we would consider the motion to table. Um, does anyone have any comments on that? Yeah, I have a couple of comments. I, I think Mr. Kenley's uh, statement was very valid in that the standards that we have established, <coughs> we've established standards for a reason. And if we start deviating from the standards in this neighborhood, then other neighborhoods would request the same thing. The, the intent of the ordinance was to keep the neighborhoods consistent with where they currently are in status. Uh, I mean, there are, are other options to that, but that doesn't help the applicant. Uh, I mean, there are other neighborhoods with bigger lots and bigger houses, and, and that's certainly, I don't think, a, a valid alternative to his request. But by looking at each neighborhood without objective standards, then we are putting this purely in a subjective decision-making process due to requests, due to views. Cape Elizabeth doesn't have view easement. Um, uh, it's affecting my view. It's a creating a shadow. Uh, all these other, other very subjective opinions that we traditionally, in interpretation of the ordinance, have not let this affect our decision making. We've been very objective to our decision making to this process. I voted against tabling it because I don't think it's our responsibility to, to, to request a tabling. If the applicant wants to table it, then that's certainly his decision to do that. I voted against it because I don't think it's our responsibility to table his application because of we need to do more homework. That's not the issue. Based on my experience with the board, the in interpretation of the ordinance and our historical standards that we have established and that we have in place, this is a significant deviation on size square footage to those standards. I don't like it, but nevertheless, that's the interpretation of the ordinance that we have established. And so based on that criteria, this does not meet the square footage qualification. I am certainly open to suggestions if the applicant wants to table it and further pursue it. If the applicant wants to, I would support that. If the applicant wants to uh, bring other options for expansion, then I would certainly approve that. I'm not against the applicant and his intent. I am charged with enforcing the ordinance as it's written, and historically this is, as Mr. Kinley 
I think who's brand new member to the board has grasped that very very well from the from this very first meeting and so I uh, that's where I'm faced with I'm uh, faced with the interpretation of the ordinance as it is it, it's difficult based on the current neighborhood criteria that we're faced with if if the applicant requests a table and it's still up to the board to make a decision whether they want to want to entertain the table it's that's still uh, going to be right back to you so it doesn't really make any difference whether the board or the well, I, I just feel like it's it if that we should make our determination and not table it because of our uncertainty I think we should if if it's going to be tabled it should be at the applicant's request that's why I voted against that not tabling it but the origin of it if that makes sense I don't think it needs to be tabled from my standpoint or from our standpoint from the board's standpoint is my feeling well then I apologize if I made a procedural misstep there um, does the board have any objection to uh, reopening comments so the duddies if they so choose can make a motion to table this I would move we open reopen comments do we have a second second okay. all in favor no, sir, sure. just a point of order here I, I believe you had a, 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 a motion that was denied uh, three to two is that correct yes one of those three that, that were in the majority has to make the motion has to make oh. a motion um, to to uh, reconsider well so does that mean I've got to make the motion one of the yeah if you were one of the three yes. JRI. if it, the the ones the, the, the people that are in the affirmative have to have to make the motion Consider a tabling to, to, to overturn the, the formal uh, decision. It prevents the people who made the motion from continuous week. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> so it's, my understanding is that if we're going to move to reconsider our prior motion to table, one of the three. Voted nay. We'll have to make that motion. I don't have a problem. With she that did ask. Right. Sure. She did ask for. The applicant, after we, after we voted it down, did in fact ask for reconsideration. So what are we? We are. If if that is suggested, then we are simply reopening it for a second. Another vote. motion. For what? For another motion, yes. It had to be made and seconded by one of the three people who were on the, the uh, for lack of a better word, winning. the uh, right. voted against it, winning side <laughs> of that motion, and then and then the full board can take can take a uh, uh, a vote, but it has to come from 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 that side in order to be to open it back up. Otherwise, you could go on forever. Right. Is there a problem with doing that? That's no. I mean, it's the board's decision, or it's the people who voted on the winning side of that vote to 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 to, to reconsider by by a, by a, by making a motion to reconsider with a second by that same. Uh, by that well, same three. Are we reconsidering giving the applicant that request? Is that what we're reconsidering? No, you're reconsidering your motion to, 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 to not table it. Should we not have input from the applicant? I think you need to have the support of the three people that, 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 that were on the, the voting side of that the, the, the winning side for lack of a better term you got to if you don't have the support to reconsider then there's no sense to go anyway you got to have you got to have that and then you can open it up once you get that you can open it up for, for discussion again I'll make that motion that to be reconsidered then. okay and there's going to be a second is there a second one of those two I'll second. 
So we are reopening for discussion whether uh, we should table this application um, this time at the request of the, the, the Dunnies. Um, any discussion on that or? I, I would like to see, I would like to give the Duddies opportunity to comment on whether they would like to proceed or. Well, so moved. You got it. <laughs> we would like to have the chance. Well, <laughs> okay. I, yeah, no, please. I think, I think you got to vote to, to reconsider that motion. You got to get that behind you. And then, then it's back on the table and you can have discussion. But you got to go through that exercise first. Okay. All, all in favor. You can discuss that, but it's limited to that. Understood. All in favor of reconsidering our earlier motion, our earlier vote on whether to table the Duddy's application. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Now, <laughs> you can ask the applicant to to speak. Mr. D Mr. Duddy, would you like well, to? I'm sorry. I think, in effect, what my intent was undoing our cancellation of the table. I don't think that was fair to the, to the applicant. That's fine. I'm not in and, support of the applicant tabling it. I'm not in support of us tabling it. Right. I just didn't, I, if, I, we should have given him the opportunity, them the opportunity to table it if they're so desired. That's my feeling. Well, you, to request not, that. Not the, object, to not the end point, that. but the, how we got to the end yeah. point. So. You, you should give, you, you feel like they should have the opportunity to request that of the board but not to, you can't leave it up to him to, to say, I want it tabled and without a vote. He'd have to withdraw his application, wouldn't he? Or What's that? I'd say he'd have to withdraw his application, not right. table it, but exactly. he'd have to say, I want to take my application back and work on it. So, so you're there, you're where, where you want to be. Uh, now it's open for discussion, and you can listen to what, if he wants, if he wants to go down that road, you, you, you listen to his input, and then you make a decision, um, again, whether you want to table it based on whatever the applicant has said. Okay, I'm going to turn it back over to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate that. Good job. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Duddy, um, do, you do you have a, a, a request that you would like to make of the board at this time? I'd like the parliamentarian to please rise and explain what's going on. So uh, we would like an opportunity to provide written comment, whether that opportunity comes by way of a motion that, you would, uh, um, that one of you would make and the board would pass to allow us to table and come back, or whether that means we're going to re request to withdraw the application and resubmit it next month, I'm not sure, but would like the opportunity to, to submit something in writing. So whichever is... Um, from a parliamentary point of view, most efficacious. That's what we'd like to do here. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think the need said to withdraw the application. I think that would only be if the board decided not to table. It, then the applicant could say, "Well, I want to withdraw my application before a vote's taken to deny or approve." Yeah. All right. I'll, you're not there I, 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 I would move that we table this application till the next meeting. Second. All in favor? Well, you, you've got to ask for discussion. If no discussion, then you vote. I, I apologize. I'm running this like a banana republic. Um, is there any discussion uh, on the motion to table? And, and since you made the motion, please, what is, what is your supposed intent? For the benefit of the board and the audience. Uh, my intent of making the motion was to bring us back to where we were before on the tabling and giving the Duddies an opportunity and to get us out of this mess. <laughs> well, look. I, as I stand here, I think the only thing that you would do by the only thing, but what would you you would do by tabling versus having me withdraw is saving me the hundred and fifty dollar refiling fee. So. Um, that's a good point. <laughs> and that's fine. I'd ask that you consider um, tabling it for another month. And Bruce, would this be something that you would that we would re-notice to abutters again, or no? We'd no? re-notice. No, no, no. If it's tabled, it, it, they've already got notice, and 
and if they watch some meeting, right. so, so be it. If they haven't, then they're not okay. concerned. So it's, it's up to them to figure out what, what's happening at this point. Okay. All right. Um, any other discussion on the motion to table? All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, the ayes have it. Um, the Duddy's application has been tabled until the next reg regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Duddy, I appreciate you coming in. Um, I know we ran you a little bit through the grinder here, but um, we, we appreciate your presentation. Thank you. <coughs> do we have any communications? We do not. We do not. That's it. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thanks.